Hi guys, I'm Julie Spencer, author of the Bucks and Peak series. Uh, this is Bucks and Peak book one, who is Ian Taylor? And we are going to start on chapter seven this evening. When we left off at the end of chapter six, um, they're in an airplane with the entire band, Bucks and Peak, and um, Megan is pretty upset because she just realized that um, she has been thrust into a, a world of drinking and drugs and, and it's just not the lifestyle that she wants to lead, so she's really frustrated. Um, she just kind of told Ian and Jeremy, his agent, that she didn't want to live this life and that she really wants Ian back. She wants her boyfriend back. So this is chapter seven and it is called Not Your Love. Okay. Ian pulled himself off his knees and lowered himself into his seat, watching the woman he loved crying into his agent's shoulder. As the plane lifted into the sky, his heart sank into his stomach. It left a pit there that choked him. How could she be so upset over a few emails? He couldn't remember how many intimate details he'd shared with his agent as they traveled the world. He'd never even thought about it before but suddenly realized she probably wouldn't want him to do that. Jeremy knew just about everything about Ian, from his shoe size, to how many scoops of chocolate he wanted in his protein shakes, to how many times he, how many times a day he used the toilet. Suddenly, Ian realized that Megan had said this wasn't just about the emails, it was about him. He'd never felt this kind of rejection. Ian knew he couldn't separate himself from who he was. The charade was over. They had to face this future. She didn't want him. She wanted the him that he'd pretended to be for the past six months. But he knew instinctively that the, that, that person he'd presented to her was only half the story. He was Ian Taylor, lead singer and songwriter of the rock band Buxton Peak. He was famous and everywhere he went, people knew him. They asked him for his autograph. They asked him to take photographs with them. Girls threw themselves at him and he smiled and let them kiss him. He knew he would never do anything else with them, but they didn't know that. They wanted him. They all wanted him. For years, girls had wanted him. He could have a girl in any city wherever they went. All he had to do was invite them into his arms, but he never did. He was waiting. He'd been waiting all his life. Now that he'd finally met the one girl he wanted to say yes to, she was rejecting him. It was a cruel world. Ian just stared at Megan. He couldn't take his eyes off the long brown hair of the girl he loved. She was finally here, finally in his inner circle. She finally knew who he was and his mates had met her. It was everything he'd dreamed of, but it felt like if he took his eyes off of her, she would disappear. Suddenly, Kai was crouched next to him, as if he instinctively knew something was very wrong. Move your rear over, mate. He shoved Ian to the, eye, to the side and sat next to him. <laughs> Megan looked up, embarrassed and sniffling. Jeremy reached across and found a tissue to hand her. He, she took it gratefully and lowered her gaze, embarrassed she was crying in front of Kai Burton. She recognized him as the lead guitar player and remembered he had a beautiful voice as well. Kai smiled at her lightly. She realized immediately she'd misjudged him. He was a little intimidating, a little intimidating, but actually quite normal, other than the rugged handsomeness that had obviously helped propel him into stardom. Sorry you got upset, love. This must be a little overwhelming. It felt strange to hear Kai call her love just like Ian did. She looked back and forth between them and realized it was just an endearing way British people spoke to one another. What had made her feel special before now made her feel like just another one of the girls they hung out with. It overwhelmed her again and she sobbed into her hands. Megan, love, Ian pleaded. What's wrong? Please tell me. Stop calling me that, she snapped at him. I'm not your love. I'm not anybody's love. I don't want this. This this life. Megan. Kai reached over and pulled Megan's hands from her face, forcing her to look at him. I didn't mean it the way Ian does. 
I just said it out of habit. He loves you more than he probably even realizes. He talks about you constantly. You're all he thinks about. He calls his mom to tell her the cute things you say and drives us all crazy with sappy tales of lying on the beach with you. He writes you stupid, disgusting love songs. <laughs> if he loves me so much, why didn't he tell me who he really was? Why did he lead me on these past six months? He had plenty of opportunities to tell me the truth, but he didn't. Put yourself in his position for a moment, Kai said. How would you feel if everyone you met Everyone you got close to was only after you because you were famous. If you couldn't fall in love because you always wonder if the only reason they were with you was to get something from you. Megan shifted her eyes from Kai over to Ian and tried to see the situation from his perspective. He must feel so used by everyone. But there was still the matter of his lifestyle. How was she supposed to live like this? But I don't want the life you lead. I don't want to be around drinking and drugs and women hanging around you just because you're famous. I want a simple life with a normal job and a house and kids and a normal husband. This isn't going to last forever. Kai shook his head. Ian is one of the most talented musicians I've ever met, but even he is going to want a normal life someday. Besides, he's not going to be young and gorgeous for too many more years, and then girls aren't going to want him anymore. Gee, thanks, pal. Do you think you could sugarcoat it a little? Megan had to laugh at Kai through her tears. He made Ian sound endearing, and she looked over at him with a slight smile. Ian grinned at her sheepishly, and Megan realized his eyes were glistening, too. He did love her, and she was being silly. She reached across and wrapped her arms around Ian's neck. He hid her face in her hair. Excuse me. He hid his face in her hair and held her close. We'll get through this, Ian whispered through his tears. I promise. I love you, Ian, she whispered back. You're all I want, even though some things will be hard for me to get used to. When they finally pulled away and dried their tears, they realized that Jeremy and Kai had discreetly walked back over to join the party, and it was as if no conflicts had arisen. Megan and Ian were just two kids in love, holding one another in the corner of a very fancy private jet. They didn't have to be part of the gathering in the other corner. They just wanted each other. Ian pulled her over to sit on his lap, and they watched their friends in silence. Sheila and Gary were sitting close together, and he was practically resting his head on her shoulder. Whatever he was whispering to her made her laugh over and over, but not loud enough that it was bothering anyone else's conversations. Andy sat with one arm around Megan's roommate Jenny and the other around Rhonda's roommate Melissa. Kai had pulled out an acoustic guitar and was showing Rhonda how to play a chord. They all looked very settled, and it made Megan sigh with contentment. It was all going to be okay, somehow. I want to meet your mom and dad, Ian whispered. I was afraid before because I didn't want anyone to recognize me, but it's a little late now. We'll be discreet so it's just your family and friends, okay? He pulled her chin around so, she could look in, so he could look her in the eye and reassure her with his gaze. Okay, she nodded, then leaned close so her forehead rested against his and she could look him directly in the eye. We'll try to keep this contained as long as we can, he tried to reassure her. I want you to have a normal life for as long as possible. She nodded in agreement, rested her head on his shoulder, and closed her eyes. They held each other for a long time, not speaking or interacting with the others, just enjoying being together. It had been a long, emotional day. Ian looked up, caught the attention of his agent, and made a gesture indicating it was time to wrap up the party. Jeremy immediately rose from his seat to go address the pilot. After a few moments, the plane banked just slightly and began a barely perceptible descent. The expert landing was smooth as silk, and the party briefly paused while the girls gathered themselves together to leave the plane. The guys followed the girls down the stairs to wave goodbye, and Gary and Andy ducked under the plane and off into the night, where Megan was sure there would be one last smoke before flying off to Orlando. Kai held Rhonda's hand loosely, raising his eyebrows suggestively as he backed up and released her hand. He looked over at Megan, winked at her, 
and turned to head back up the stairs. Megan held on to Ian as long as she could before, tuck, before she tucked herself into the back seat of Jenny's car. She watched with longing as the man of her dreams slipped away as they pulled out of the parking lot. Stop! Megan grabbed Jenny's shoulder. Stop the car! The car screeched to a halt and Megan hung herself half out the open window. Ian! She yelled back to him. What is it, love? He called back. Yes! Ian jumped up and punched the sky. Kai gave a thumbs up sign from the top steps and there was a whoop from somewhere behind the plane. Jenny squealed her tires as she peeled out of the parking lot and everyone inside and outside the car was back in celebration mode. The girls screamed like teenagers as they sped back to campus to attempt to study for another few weeks before Christmas break and the guys rose into the sky flying off to make headlines. That is the end of chapter seven. We'll see you at chapter eight. It's called Mum's the Word. <laughs>